Hello, viewers. I appreciate the comments that have been left in the videos and thank you for the requests for things to see. I've got the uh, 66 red eye back out because we forgot to discuss thread tension. That's an important aspect on the running of a machine. Uh, so we're going to discuss we're going to discuss the thread tension. So, in order for a sewing machine to work, there has to be um, tension on the thread to make it sew correctly, to make the stitch form in the right spot. So let's have a brief discussion on what happens. Uh, when you sew two pieces of cloth together using um, thread with a lock stitch machine. So, if I draw a cross section of um, fabric uh, chucked up in a machine, we'll have a line that is the dividing line between the upper and lower piece of fabric, and then the thickness of the fabric. There's the top piece. And there's the bottom piece. So we have two pieces of fabric to be joined together by stitches. So we're going to have a upper thread, which in this case is going to be the green thread that I have um, threaded up in the machine and it's going to come from the upper And then the lower thread is going to come from the bobbin. And each place where the needle comes into the fabric, the two threads are going to loop around each other. And so it's going to loop around and come down and then loop around and go down and loop around and go down and loop around and so on and so on. So you see where the two threads cross each other happens at each point in the middle of the fabric. So this is what the um, thread looks like when the tensions are properly set. The two threads cross each other at the middle and are drawn equally on top and bottom. So if the upper thread was to be too tight or the lower thread too loose, we would get something that looks like this. With the upper thread resting more or less straight on the top side of the fabric and the lower thread coming up and looping around it. at each place. Okay, like that. So here's the upper thread and it's tight and the lower thread is loose. So the stitch is forming up here. Now in reality it could form anywhere between here and here. But in most cases when the threads are imbalanced you end up with a straight piece of thread across the one side and then the the side that's too loose does this and then of course if the opposite was to happen let's extend our fabric out a little the opposite was to happen if the lower thread was too tight or the upper thread too loose 
we would end up with this, the lower thread resting on the bottom of the fabric and the upper thread coming down and um, doing just what was happening in this example. So here the lower thread is straight and the upper thread is um, too loose or the lower thread is too tight and the stitch locking is forming at the bottom side of the fabric and of course as I said before it could happen anywhere between here and here if this is too tight and this is too loose. In addition you will generally have some kind of puckering of the fabric occur especially if the lower thread is too tight the um, lower thread is more sensitive to variations in tension than the upper thread is and therefore it's generally advisable to just set the tension on the lower thread to where it generally needs to be for the type of work you're doing and then make any adjustments further with the um, control for the upper thread. As we're going to see in a moment, the control for the upper thread tension allows for much finer adjustment than the control for the lower thread does. So, we're going to take a look now at how tension is handled on the lower thread. And as I said, we are using a Singer um, 66 machine here. If you have a shuttle type machine, uh, the way you adjust the thread tension is going to be a little different. And I'll very briefly um, discuss that, but it's going to be basically the same no matter, in principle, no matter what kind of machine you're using. Um, these all have a adjusting screw for adjusting the lower thread tension and on the 66 it's that screw there to the left the screw on the right is the screw which holds the leaf spring to the bobbin case and then the screw on the left adjusts the pressure by which the leaf spring presses against the um, case and it pinches the thread between the spring and the case as it operates and that's what provides the thread tension so when you are cleaning a machine up that has been standing idle for some time it is generally a good idea to remove the bobbin case and take this apart and make sure there's no scoring in the places where the thread um, travels through make sure it's nice and clean generally speaking if you're working on one of these if you can put some cheap thread in there and pull on it it has a very nice consistent even pull I would say it's probably okay that is what I have done on machines that I have repaired. If the thread tension is nice and consistent and isn't uh, jerky, if you feel it wanting to bind up or um, it seems like you have to back the screw out too far to get a reasonable tension. And by reasonable, I mean um, when I pull on this um, thread here, the pull seems to be if I had a, a scale between my fingers and the thread the pull would be somewhere in the neighborhood of six to eight ounces of pull required to um, pull that thread out and it's very even in its entirety so that's where you adjust the uh, the lower thread tension is that screw there and a word about the type of screwdrivers that you use don't be tempted to get 
one of these nifty all-in-one screwdrivers like this one right here and I, I have a Phillips bit in there right now but it's got um, flat bits stored in the handle here because the shank on these screwdrivers is quite bulky and to get at the tension means coming in at this angle here where this cutout is in the slide plate and getting on the screw and it's going to be very difficult to get on that screw and not bugger it up because you're not getting on it squarely. So the best thing to do if you don't have an original Singer screwdriver that would have been supplied with the machine is to get a jeweler's screwdriver and make sure the tip is properly ground and use that to adjust the tension screw on the bobbin thread. So a jeweler's screw, a uh, screwdriver, is the right instrument to use. Like I said, it has a very narrow shank compared to a all-in-one screwdriver that even though these are handy, um, you see how much bulkier it is, and this slot in the slide plate is is there for the purpose of getting at that screw for adjusting the tension. So you want something that's going to get on there and um, be at a reasonable angle on the screw so you don't chew the screw up. Very important. If you have a shuttle machine like the uh, 127 and 128, you're going to adjust the thread tension using that screw right there. And it works in the same way. Uh, Lefty loosey, righty tighty. It's just a regular right hand threaded screw pressing on a spring. So it's going to adjust the tension in the same way that this one is. Or this one's going to adjust the tension in the same way that this one will. So simple stuff there. So once you have this set up, you can, you can close that off. We're done down there. And then we go to here. And this side is a little bit more complicated than, than the uh, bottom. So there are um, two polished steel discs with a plate and a spring and an adjusting screw. And then there is also a um, wire spring that you can see the thread is looped around. And that's this spring right here. And that goes by a few different names. I generally call it the check spring. And the check spring is adjusted so that it... Um, maintains tension on the thread as the needle is descending but by the time according to Singer's literature by the time the eye of the needle reaches the fabric this spring should be totally out of play and resting against its stop and um, I don't know if this is adjusted exactly like that but it seems to work it might still have a little bit of um, action in it uh, we might try doing a little bit of fine-tuning adjusting on this as a part of this video on the adjusting the tension. So I've got some black felt here, which is the correct type of felt if you are um, putting new felt on a newer model uh, Emerson fan. Uh, this is a 1946 fan here, and you can see it uses uh, black felt. This is original felt. Um, I've got a couple late 40s fans in the other room that I've uh, reflocked the bases with the with the black felt. And so this is a a square of felt um, that wasn't big enough to use on a full size fan base, so. I'm using it to test a sewing machine, and afterwards I'll probably use it for um, as a polishing cloth of some sort. That's what I do. So, we've got um, 
piece of fabric chucked up under the presser foot here with a green thread for the upper and a white thread for the lower so that we'll be able to see the stitches easily as they are made and we can scrutinize the adjustment of this machine and get it set up. So I've got the hand crank disengaged. I'm just going to turn the balance wheel over by hand a few turns to um, see how this goes. Like I said, let's watch the needle here and see how that thread check mechanism is working. So can you see the eye of the needle? So now reach the fabric and there is still tension in the spring. Needle has reached its lowest point and the take up arm is descending and the uh, spring is totally slack. Now the take up action is occurring. It looks like it's working right. It looks like the spring is uh, coming out of action a little late because the needle is already down to its lowest point by the time that spring is back against its stop but if the um, stitches look correct we won't fuss over it Okay, how's that? So, I'm looking at the uh, fabric here. And as I look at the top side, um, I can't see any of the white thread showing at the uh, needle holes. And if I flip it over, we can just see some of the uh, green thread showing at the needle holes. very hard to tell actually I don't think I can see any of the green thread at all so the threads are looping together in the middle real nicely of course this is some thick uh, fabric. If I was using some real thin fabric, you would um, you would see a little on this side. You would see a little white dot where each uh, needle hole was, and on this side, you would see a little uh, green dot where each um, needle hole was. And um, yeah, you can just make out the little green dots there. So what you would do then, if you wanted to pull the lower thread up to where you could see it more on this side, you would increase the upper tension 
and you do it right here and just do it a little bit and then run a few stitches and then as it as the thread is taken up pulled tight you would that's when you would be able to see the lower thread pulling up onto the top side of the fabric so let's adjust the tension to where it's a little too tight and we can see that upper uh, that upper thread pulling the lower thread up onto this side adjust the tension a little tighter still might not be able to see it with this fabric as thick as it is I've got that uh, tightened down quite a bit more than it was when we initially started Also, the way it's timed, let's look at a few completed stitches here afterwards. Okay, there you can just see the white, the white thread there. Right there is a couple good examples. There we go, where I've got it real tight. You can just see the white thread there pulling up onto this side of the fabric. Okay, so see we have the uh, get the camera to focus here. You see there we have the upper thread tight enough that we see a little bit of the lower thread. Now it's still not so tight that it's just literally laying across the um, fabric tight but it's still being pulled down by the lower I would almost say this is um, too tight because if we look at the other side we see it all going up in there we don't see any of the uh, green thread at all do we we come back here where we had it where we had the tension you see there we have a little bit of the green thread showing maybe it's very hard to tell I should have used red and blue but um let's go ahead and run this off I'm gonna back the tension off a little bit to where closer to where it was initially was about there I think there was two threads showing on the uh, center stud past the nut and then a full thread like that get back up and since the last video of this machine was made I found a uh, a 
thread cutter that wasn't broken in my stash of parts and stuck on there. So now all I gotta do is run the two threads in there like that and pull smartly and it cuts the ends off for me. No fiddling around looking for scissors. Okay, let's come over here where there's good light. Let's look at our thread here. Let's look at our stitches and see how they look. So this is the bottom side. And over in this area here is where I tightened the upper thread and then right here is where I loosened the upper thread so you can definitely see the little green dots there of the lower of the upper thread here on the lower side so let's flip it over now and look at the opposite side of the piece so we started at this end here and I kept progressively tightening the upper thread So right in here is where we start seeing little white dots between the, um, the bits of green there. And this is where I had the uh, upper thread fairly tight and then I slackened it back off as we went along here. You can see the little white dots right there towards the end we come over here you see the little uh, green dots right there they look equal on both sides so right here at the end we had the stitches the thread tensions balanced and that's what you're looking for when you're adjusting the thread tension As far as disassembling this to clean it, uh, it's fairly simple. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about that briefly. So there's two ways you can take one of these apart. There is a screw right here in this hole that when you loosen it, this entire assembly comes out and it looks like this when it's removed. Now on this machine I haven't had it removed because it's stuck in there and I haven't taken the time to um, try to get it freed up. There was no real reason to. This machine was fairly clean. But if your machine is fairly dirty you'll want to um, probably take that out and clean it all up real good. But this is what the assembly looks like out of a when it's when it's removed when you loosen that screw up in the um, back side of the um, front of the head here and it comes apart like this then you can further disassemble it uh, whether you leave this in the machine and disassemble it or disassemble it um, on the bench uh, the procedure is the same so I'm gonna unthread the tension mechanism here and leave the machine threaded up trying to get the thread off of that uh, spring there okay nope oh, it went ahead and came out of the uh, of the uh, needle. That's alright, we're not going to do any more sewing with it. You get the gist of how to adjust it. Uh, I don't have to explain any further, I don't think. So, if you know it's going to come apart, if you know the whole thing's going to come apart, and you're going to 
taken apart anyway. Sometimes it's just as easy just to leave leave um, leave this body on the machine and go ahead and get everything broke loose and then take it off. So this is what you would do. You'd leave this nut on here, um, but back it off to about there, and then using a screwdriver of a suitable size, you'd loosen that off. Then go ahead and remove the nut. And set it aside on a, on a piece of cloth where you can rub it and clean it. If it's real dirty, use some steel wool and some uh, carburetor cleaner or lacquer thinner or um, kerosene if it doesn't need to be real aggressive. Then there's the conical spring that actually provides the tension then there's the um, plate with the um, center strut running through the hole and that operates on a push rod or is operated on by a push rod that releases the uh, tension when you raise the um, presser foot up and on this one here, you can see this right here is the push rod. Press it down against the table, you can see the push rod raising that disc and taking the um, spring tension off of the tension discs. And then there's the outer tension disc. And on a Singer machine like this, both the tension discs are the same. And the lower tension disc. And then unscrewing this stud allows you to remove the check spring and the push rod. And there's the push rod there. If you have trouble where there's no tension at all, the push rod would be a great suspect to check. Chances are it's gummed up with dried oil and needs to be removed and washed in some kerosene or lacquer thinner or carburetor cleaner. And then you're left with, in this case, the, um, the body of the tension assembly. That's uh, this part right here. Uh, still in the machine and if your machine isn't real dirty there's no reason to remove it if it is fairly dirty um, gently soaking a little bit of kerosene on on the inside side and um, working this tapping this back and forth or using a suitable tool to work it loose then it can be pulled out withdrawn and then you can clean um, take off the face plate and that's becomes an extra access hole for getting inside the head and cleaning out all the debris that accumulates in these things. So checking out the parts, make sure um, everything is pretty clean. Make sure the springs are clean and don't have any um, rust pitting or thin spots from, from rusting. Uh, as those will be points that affect the um, strength of the springs and where they might break. Make sure the spring has the proper shape. If you look at this spring here, it's a factory original spring and hasn't been broken off and rebent. And so this is the way it should look. The uh, inside end of the spring has a single turn coil that's wound smaller than the other coils and that's so that it can get pinched um, between this shoulder here and the um, inside of this and then you know that's a good place to clean out too to clean out the inside of that body make sure the push rod moves freely inside the um, the hole that's bored through the center of the stud and doesn't bind. Roll the um, roll the push rod on a flat surface and make sure it's straight, and not bent. 
the main tensioning spring. As you can see, this is one with a nice original finish, and they were blued. Uh, it's a blued steel. Um, make sure there's no um, corrosion or pitting. As again, um, any areas that are corroded will cause a weak spot and affect the tension of the spring. You can take this apart and clean it up if you wish. Uh, steel wool and a little bit of kerosene works great. It's nickel plated. Um, don't rub too hard. And then probably the most important part. Oh yeah, and then the nut. Make sure the nut's clean. As you can see, I really haven't taken the time to clean, take this apart and clean this. In fact, this is probably the... Um, only the second time I've ever had this apart on this machine. So, so this machine was fairly clean. And I really haven't done a whole lot of detail work to it. It, it works as is. And um, if I was fixing this up for somebody else, I would probably go through all the effort of washing all these parts. And um, taking everything in here apart. And going over it real well. But... Um, for me, it works just fine. Most of these are cosmetic issues. They don't affect the functionality of the machine. Um, something that's not cosmetic, though, that will affect the functionality of the machine are these tension discs. And this camera probably exaggerates a little bit, but you do not want to see any scratches, pitting, or scoring on the surfaces of these discs. You want them to be clean and smooth, you don't want to fill any any uh, deep scratches. You want to run your um, fingernail around these edges here where they come in contact with each other and feel for any kind of a pit or scratch that you can feel catching the edge of your fingernail uh, because that will cause um, the thread to catch and you will not be able to adjust the tension. So these need to be a very clean and not a high polish, but a dull polish like you see here. And so check both of those. Something that works really great if they just need a little bit of minor polishing um, would be to take a piece of felt like this right here and rub into it some Mother's um, Mag Wheel Polish and then put the disc down on it and rub it into the polish and um, try to polish out any of the minor imperfections that might be in there. Uh, any imperfections that are, are, are deeper, you'll need to use some fine grit um, sandpaper and go over these with some fine grit sandpaper until you get the um, imperfections removed and you have to do it evenly. Put this on the sandpaper and go back and forth around like that and get in there and, and, and get all that surface polished out. Then you'll have to get progress to finer and finer compounds and then finally the, um, the mother's polished I mentioned um, in a piece of felt for uh, final polishing and that will um, restore the finish. Um, it will thin the metal out a little bit, so if they're very deep scratches, it might be a better idea just to find a replacement set of discs. But very important that these be um, clean and free of scratches, as mentioned. And then the, the reassembly uh, is fairly straightforward. There's a few things you need to know about. And one of them is the um, timing of this um, spring. There's two adjustable features of these springs that uh, allows you to uh, adjust it to perform like it's supposed to. And one of those is the initial tension in the spring. And the other is the resting position. And to adjust the resting position, you have to have this part free in the main body casting of the arm to where you can rotate it left or right to um, determine where that um, where that spring is going to rest 
when it's inactive. The other adjustment is the initial tension on the spring. And if you take the spring and go ahead and place it in there, and then take the, the, um, the threaded stud and stick it back in, when, you, when it comes first in contact, that shoulder with that coil, it's going to, um, as you snug it up, it's going to preload the spring a little bit. If that tension is not sufficient, what you would do is loosen this up and reposition it over here like so and um, hold it with one hand and then snug this down with the other So I've just done that. Now it wants the natural position where it wants the rest is there. And then I put it there. Now it has more tension on it. And then to make it looser, I would, I would rotate it the opposite direction. Um, you still want it to go... If you have it loose, having it loose, the best thing to do would have it to where it's just... Uh, where it wants to be right there on that point there it would be about the uh, minimum looseness that you could give that spring because then it's going to uh, wind up a little bit as it goes this way but you still want it to come against that stop so once you've got that set up reinstall the nut and thread it on Till the end of the um, stud is just showing out and then using your screwdriver of a suitable size snug that up to where it's tight and then take the the nut back off then the very next thing you need to do is take and reinsert the push rod in and then push it into position with the uh, lifting disc then you can insert the tension discs and I think it's best to put them back in the original order this was the um, inner disc so it's gonna go on there like that behind the the uh, check spring and then the outer disc is gonna go back on there behind the check spring like so then the lifting disc then the tension spring itself and then the nut and if everything was right when you took it apart you can if you knew where it was how many threads were sticking out past the nut you can put it back there if not you'll have to use a piece of test fabric and uh, readjust everything to your liking uh, so that's how you do that to uh, take the lower out is a little bit more complicated I'm not going to show that um, like I said it's best to test things first if that thread has a nice even pull to it then there's really not a reason to fiddle with it and if everything looks fairly clean around here then you can just leave it as be just just clean around it um, oftentimes you do need to take all this apart and uh, that's not a big deal. That's the subject for another video uh, on another day. But uh, as far as tension issues go, if the uh, thread pull is nice and consistent, and like I said, about, I'm going to say six to eight ounces of pressure to pull on it, 
then everything down here is working correctly. And six to eight ounces is just a ballpark estimate. It might need to be higher, it might need to be lower, depending on the thread size and fabric you are working with. But I would say, for the type of work I've done with this machine, I would say six to eight ounces is a good um, is a good general purpose um, with this cheap. This is just cheap thread from a Dollar General store. Comes on these little little spools here. It's just cheap thread. Works really good though. These machines are not picky at all. They'll they'll digest. <laughs> they'll digest just about anything. So. There you have it. Uh, further questions, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, uh, that's really all, all that needs to be said on this video. So, thank you for watching.